Hello, I'm Flyboy Pioi, and today I've got a little story for you guys, a little bit of a different video. It's about something that happened to me back in Easter, and well, you've probably guessed what it is from the title of the video, but I'll pretend you didn't anyway. So, basically, you might have remembered from that last talk video I had where I said I haven't been making videos for a while, um, that I said, I've become a delivery driver, and I, I actually had been doing it for about a year at this point. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, while I was out at work on Easter Saturday, I was involved in this serious collision. So um, yeah, I'm going to get straight into it. So I'm going to talk about my point of view, what it's like to have it happen, because you never expect it, of course. So uh, the story begins on this entry road to a large A road. So if you're not from the UK, these are like, not motorways, but sort of a smaller version. Um, these, this one is a single carriageway, even though it, I think it was supposed to be a dual carriageway. So it is a large road. The speed limit is 60 miles per hour, and it's just, it's a very big fast road. You, you can't go slow on it, really. It's not something you can walk on, really. Um, so yeah, I was going to join the road, um, I had to turn right, so because we drive on the left, I have to cross over one lane and into my lane, and uh, carry on. So uh, it was about 2pm, but it was raining, like really heavily. Th this was like, ser this, for, for England, this was heavy rain. Um, I actually had my rear fog light on not long before that, because the visibility was just gone, because it was that bad, but I... Uh, I decided it wasn't quite necessary, so I turned it off. So, as I approached this junction, I had to wait for lots of traffic. And I had to wait for there for uh, quite a long time, and other people started waiting around me. There was a red Audi behind me, and then there was a yellow van behind him. So, uh, at this point, the rain still had not calmed down, and I actually had to put my side window down a little bit to stop it from fogging up. But, of course, not so... <coughs> sorry, not so that rain will start coming in and disrupting my vision or anything. So uh, yeah, the traffic eventually cleared and um, I was able to uh, turn right and go south down towards Cornwall. <clears throat> um, so I checked to my right and the only person that I could see, other than some guys behind him, was quite far away. He was still coming down the hill. I'll show a picture of the road from my point of view now. He was still coming down that hill. It's a really long straight road and he was indicating left, and uh, of course I would have guessed an indicator would have cancelled on the uh, on the straight road if you'd left it on from the previous roundabout, which is quite far away now. <clears throat> so I thought, okay, he's really far away, and he's indicating left, so he's going to come off on the junction that I'm waiting at, and he's going to slow down, and slow everyone else behind him down, it's, it's easy. He's okay getting out of there. So, I looked to the left, <clears throat> and there was no one, completely clear. And because I'd only just looked to the right, I uh, started to move off. Now these vans do take a little bit of time to get going sometimes, especially when they're fully loaded like mine was. So I started to move and I started to steer, and then I just sort of instinctively turned my head to the right, and um, well, that guy who was really far away was now, I don't know, between 5 and 10 metres from me. Still indicating left, I saw it flash, and... Um, looked as if he was coming at me at about over 60, maybe 70, maybe even more. But he wasn't turning. He was just he was just heading straight into my side. Th this was kind of a very weird feeling. It kind of felt like it happened for a long time, even though it was probably not even a second. Um, I just about had enough time to turn my head back straight, which was some kind of reflex. I don't really know why I did that. And then just suddenly, just the loudest sound that I've ever heard, ever. Just like a, a bang. There wasn't really any distinctive, like, metal or anything. It was just bang. Really, really loud. But as well as that, I could hear glass shattering. And it kind of sounded like like marbles being dropped on the floor or something. That's a strange noise that safety glass makes when it smashes. Um, and I felt the door just push into me. And, and I kind of felt like I was kind of... A rag doll just getting like shoved by something really heavy and yeah so I was still looking forwards and for a moment it, I was just looking at the road sign in front of me and 
all this glass was just flying past my face, like loads and loads of it, thousands of pieces, probably more than that. And then suddenly, all the outside scenery, and this didn't happen initially, it was after just a tiny pause, suddenly all this scenery flipped and it started to spin over to the left. And then I looked to my left and um, I just saw the road moving down the passenger window with the mirror folded in as the van was sliding uphill on its side. And all kinds of stuff like paperwork and and just all kinds of bits and dirt, weirdly enough, was just flying around all over the place like I was in some kind of tumble dryer or something. And then, uh, and then it just kind of all stopped and everything kind of settled all wrong and everything, and I was looking at the signpost again, and this time it was pointing downwards. Um, and I was making all kinds of noises because I was very confused and just, like, in a panic, I guess, a little bit. And I was just hanging there in my seatbelt because now my seat was up in the air. I was just sort of dangling like it was some kind of weird harness. And there was this nasty grinding noise coming from the van that I was driving, and I realised the van was still in drive, and the engine was still running, so it was probably trying to turn the back wheels, so I just kind of tried to find where the ignition was at this point, I was like, I don't know where it is, I had to try and find it, because everything had been all, you know, moved around and made strange. Um, but yeah, I turned it off straight away, and then just silence, which was strange, but kind of nice, and... And yeah, but before long, there were loads of people, I don't know how many, um, who just came running up to the windscreen. <laughs> it's, it's, again, a very weird sight, and they were all, you know, asking if I was okay, etc, etc. And, I don't know, at that point I just suddenly stopped shouting rude words and, and making grunting sounds. It was like seeing people there kind of put me out of this panic, it just calmed me down. Uh, anyway, so, I felt fine. So I just kind of maneuvered my legs off of the seat and and pushed down on the on the release button on the seat belt and I just kind of landed on the inside pillars in the van. Um, and then I was just standing there in this van um, on its side, just just weird. Um, so I started to find stuff. The first thing I went for was my own phone and my work phone. Uh, my work phone, I think, was in a in a like a little pocket thing so that was just somewhere in the van and my own phone was being used as a as a um, music device so that was it wasn't in a bag or anything it was somewhere to find um, I found those straight away because I knew I needed to call my manager and I really wanted to call my girlfriend and everything and everyone outside were just saying no just get out forget all that and I just ignored them because I really wanted to do this um, so no I took the stuff and then I thought, I'm going to go and get my bag, which was now somehow in the driver footwell. But everybody was like, no, forget the bag, just get out, and really forcibly telling me to get out. And I was a bit irritated at this point because recent events had made me slightly stressed. But uh, I thought, okay, fine, fine. So I sort of climbed up onto the passenger seat and uh, <laughs> above my head I tried to lift this door, but it wouldn't even move at all. All it did when I touched it was just more little bits of glass fell off. Um, so I had to just climb out through where the window used to be and sort of climb out, slide off of the roof over the top with the help of some other people. And I just landed there on my feet and I, I felt fine. It was weird. I felt like adrenaline pumped, but I guess shaky as well because of this strange situation. and. And it was very weird to be standing here on this A road, you don't stand on this road. And there were cars everywhere but everyone had stopped and then I, I see that my van here is on its side and, and it's all very, very bent. And then I see this other car which is just destroyed at the front. And um, they had the driver's door open, he, there was only one person in there. Um, and there was sort of a crowd around him and I went up behind the crowd and I, I sort of shouted to him are you okay? And it was this old man in there, and um, he was just looking really shocked. He, you know, he was conscious and everything, but yeah, he just looked at me like scared. I think I noticed a bit of blood on his finger or something, probably just a cut. Um, but yeah, I only then realised, from sort of seeing the side of my nose, I had all this blood all over my face. That I probably scared the old guy. Um, yeah, and then I realised 
I have this really long cut on in my head, like on, on my right, sort of around my brow and forehead. And because I was just hanging there on my side up in, in the seat there, it had all dripped down and it had gone over my nose and and I probably scared him. <laughs> So, um, yeah, then after that, some guys sort of led me to the back of that yellow van I told you about. And I sat in the side door, and um, so they sort of cleaned my face up a little bit. And I managed to get my phone working. My, my phone actually needed a restart. The screen was acting very strange. and It had all this weird dirt stuff on it. But the, um, the work phone managed to uh, function, and I called up my manager straight away. I was actually really uh, confused. I gave him the wrong junction, but luckily it was just like a mile away on the same road um, and then I managed to call up my girlfriend but there was very little signal so the message didn't exactly go through that well anyway after that um, my colleague arrived in his van he was in the middle of the road where the turning lane was because no one was there because the whole road was blocked and he just came screeching to a halt in another van like and ran up and it, I felt like really relieved and it was the guy I knew the most at the time there as well and Anyway, as we wait for the ambulances and everything, which arrived really quickly, <laughs> um, I sat in that red Audi in the front. So, um, yeah, that's essentially what happened at the time when the ambulances turned up. The uh, paramedics came and talked to me, and then uh, I just walked to the ambulance. There were two ambulances. It was one for each of us. And um, I was just in the back, in this on the bed, you know, getting all these tests done on me for quite a long time. And... The police came and spoke a little bit. They have to do a mandatory breathalyzer test while if you've been in an accident. Of course, I hadn't drunk anything in maybe months. I didn't even know. I don't drink very much. Um, and my manager turned up, and I felt really well looked after, which was nice. But obviously, I was still really shaky. I mean, I shake anyway. Like, if I hold my hand out, it shakes anyway. But So, <laughs> you know, this was like, this was a really strange, strange time. And I was pretty, pretty shocked, I guess, to to have all this happen to me and just to see the van on its side like that and have to climb out through the window and and just all these tiny little pieces all over the floor and all this liquid all over the floor. And it was still raining. And it was crazy, absolutely crazy. So um, anyway, uh, I chose not to go to the hospital after all this. Uh, the other guy went straight to the hospital, I believe. I, I heard... Ru these, these are only rumours. I heard he had broken ribs or something. Um, but I chose not to go to hospital because I didn't feel injured at all. Just a slight earache from the noise. I just wanted to go home. Um, now, I was actually quite close to my home, as it was, but um, but I didn't want to leave my car at work, so I went home with with one of the managers at work. Um, weirdly enough, here's a little, uh, little bit of trivia, I guess. I really needed the toilet after all this, so um, we actually we actually just stopped uh, on the on the freaking A road. And I just had a wee on the side of this road. This is just this is just nuts. This is crazy. It's <laughs> just such a surreal thing. And then we just got back in the car. We weren't even on the, on the like, right side of the road. The whole road was closed. It's crazy. All the traffic had gone by now. And uh, yeah. Anyway, so we went back. And I, uh, I finally tried the tea that they serve at work. And it was crap. So I just left it. And um, I was still brushing out little bits of glass from my trousers. And there was still loads of it in my hair. And um, I know I did some forms and stuff, and then I just left. I actually ended up going home on, only about an hour earlier than I normally would. Now, being really interested in in vehicle safety and accidents and physics in general, I guess I I do have this uh, this computer program called BeamNG, which is like a crash physics simulation. And uh, I thought I'd try and recreate it just as a like a like a I don't know, like a, a device to show you guys because, I mean, I only have pictures afterwards and it's hard to explain it. So, um, yeah, I, I did a few little recordings in BeamNG. They weren't extremely accurate because, of course, it's just a, it's just a, essentially a game, really, so it's not 100% accurate. Plus, the vehicles that were used in it obviously don't match, but they are sort of vaguely similar. So yeah, I'm just going to show you some of those clips I have now. Alright, so this first clip, I haven't positioned the van 
like I've only put it where it was at the point of accident, so this isn't exactly how it led up to it. So anyway, here's the car coming, and I mean he just hits the side of the van, just catches the bottom of the door there. The van sort of bounces a little bit. That was that little pause where it didn't flip, and then I mean in reality I don't think it got quite as airborne as this, but it did jump I think, and then went on its side. So the only real difference here is the car wasn't as close and the van slid uphill a lot more than it did here. In fact, it didn't slide at all here. This next clip that I have, um, because the the vehicles in BMG, most of them are left-hand drive, I've actually flipped over the way things happened because I was sitting on the driver's side. Um, so here's the clip. It's kind of what I saw. There's the guy really far away. I look to my right, start moving out, and then... So when I said I got my phone out when I was waiting in the side of that van, I, I did try and quickly take a quick picture, but the phone was all broken. This was before I restarted it. So I did try to take a, a picture of myself, but um, yeah, it's broken. So the next picture I got was um, this one. So this is when I was sat in that red Audi. So uh, yeah, um, just what a weird sight. This, these are the vans that I go to work and drive five days a week for and I have done for such a long time and I really knew this van well it was a really good van annoyingly it had to, it just come back from a engine change just the day before I think so that's pretty uh, unfortunate so this picture here is from when I was sitting in the police car giving like a um, a uh, statement to the policeman so um, wow well, yeah just just looking at the shape of the the chassis of the van you can see how hard it got hit and that's the vehicle that hit me there that Vauxhall Safira and when I was walking back well I got this picture which in my opinion is the best one you can just see how everything is everywhere and you can see how bent the van is if you look at the back and the front they aren't actually touching the floor only the middle bits touching the floor that's how that's how twisted it is and um, you can kind of see the shape of the car in the in the um, cargo box there and luckily I only just caught the bottom of the door otherwise I would have had some pretty serious injuries and it's lucky it's on that side because if you look at the underside the fuel tank is on the other side um, I guess it's just diesel I don't think that's particularly flammable if it's not pressurized but still it's a bit of a scary thought I suppose um, and this picture my friend got the one who turned up um, just from standing outside the red Audi. I think I was in the red Audi at this point. I was probably talking to some paramedics. And this is another picture. I just slightly moved over. And uh, he also got this one when he went back to his van. So this is what I meant about the middle road that he was he was um, driving down. And you can see loads of fluids all over the floor. That I, I guess that's from the accident. But I thought that was uphill. So I, I'm not exactly sure if that was from us or not. But again, look at the shape of the van, it's so twisted, it's like it's banana-fied. It's really, really horrible. Okay, so where I have blocked the number plates on the vehicles involved, I didn't bother covering up the company names in the end because one, it, it would be too hard for me to do. Two, it would look awful, it would ruin the picture basically considering it covers most of the vehicle. And three, I mean, if you're from the UK or if you just do any research, you'd be able to find out what company it is based on the colours. So anyway, I went back the next day because I was missing some things, which now I never found, kind of annoying, and um, just checked the van out. I actually went the day after as well with someone else, but um, yeah, this is um, this is kind of what it looked like when they got it back. It's in a pretty weird shape. That sticker on the windscreen there says uh, warning undeployed airbags because it didn't obviously because it wasn't a frontal collision. You can kind of see how the door is poking out through the top because uh, of the way it was pushed inwards. That's why it wouldn't open. And um, it is kind of... I mean the back is kind of pointing down and the front's pointing down. It's kind of arched I guess from, from, the, um, from the impact. Let's look at the next one. So this is looking on the inside. Um, keys are still in the ignition. The the um, light switch was still set to headlights on. It wasn't actually the next day for some reason, but everything was how it was left. They just chucked in a few bits here. But yeah, you can still see all this dirt on the side, on the inside of the door. That's what I was talking about with all this dirt that went everywhere. 
and um, you can't see it in the picture, but there were footprints where I stood on the door pillar as well. So yeah, that's the inside. I think the steering wheel is still probably turned pretty much how I had it turned on impact. They took the radio out, that's interesting. I guess they reused that. Next picture. Just it's missing all kinds of bits, it's missing trim, it's missing side lights, and you can see so much damage on the side there and it's pretty well deformed. And you can even see scratches on the on the exhaust there. That's how, how far things went. Next um, just even better example of how the door was poking outwards at the top. So this is it from the other side. There isn't really any visible damage, to be honest. The shutter door is missing its handle, but I'm thinking they just took that off to open it. Maybe it was jammed. There are scratches, but these vans are all scratched like that. Um, this is from the inside. There's still trays there, and there's still some shopping. There's bits all over, like rice cakes and pasta. Apparently there were loads of carrots all over the road when it happened, which was uh, an interesting joke for the police officers because it was Easter Saturday. Um, we we'll go over to the next picture here, just um, looking at the uh, the distance between the uh, cargo box and the cab on the right side. It's pretty thin. It's not normally that thin. And on the left side, which it's taken from, it's uh, a lot larger than it used to be. Um, that object just inside the cargo box there as well is the uh, drive shaft which I think they had to take off to actually tow the van because it was still in drive. Um, I did actually see it getting towed back. When I was driving home it passed me on the same road. Um, I, gave it a th I gave the guy driving it a thumbs up, he probably didn't know who I was. Um, in this picture you can see the rim has actually bent leading to the tyre deflating and I, I don't really know why that happened. Um, the mirror is still folded in as it is. The mirrors on these vans are extremely tough, so they didn't. It didn't come off. And um, yeah, this is from the front. Um, that scrape on the headlight was already there, which is weird. Um, but yeah, this is kind of lined up with the cargo box at the back. So that's how much it's bent because you can clearly see the front of the van is not facing the camera, but the back of the van is. That's how twisted it is. So yeah, that's how the van looked like afterwards. Pretty, uh, pretty weird to um, go back to it like that. Right, so later injuries that I had. Later that night, I really had sore head. I don't get headaches, so this wasn't that. I just had a sore head sort of on the right side, I suppose. I did have a few pains. I had some pain under my ribs on the right, in my right arm, and for some reason in my left knee, which I think is to do with like your knee doesn't really go anywhere in the vans especially as it's an automatic so it probably hit something um, other than that I was still fine um, but then the next day I really felt this whiplash coming and and it was horrible it got worse and worse it lasted for a couple of months at the least it was really not nice to live with when you have to turn your entire torso just to look around say if you want to cross a road or something really really not nice I got some some exercises from the doctor and with time and the exercise it eventually went away but if any of you ever do have whiplash I really recommend you sort it out sooner rather than later that's what everyone says and now I'm saying it too because it's true so anyway in the end it was decided you know who was at fault for this accident well in the end it was me I'm at fault apparently and to some extent I agree but by, by some extent, I mean 30%, maybe. I don't really agree with, with the final decision, and neither do many, many other people. In fact, I've only met one colleague at work who disagreed and said, yeah, it was my fault. Everyone else, family, friends, people who I've only just met, people who I don't know, all have said, that's not your fault. And I had injury solicitors that backed out of it, so I didn't get any compensation for the uh, horrible injury to my neck. And I didn't get any reimbursement from time off of work or anything. And at work as well, I got demoted. I, I no longer drive vans, which is horrible because I really, really loved that job. That job was amazing. My pay was reduced. My hours were cut, even though I was promised that my hours would stay the same. It's horrible. I hate my new job. I can't wait to leave. It's really nasty hours in early morning and all I do is just physical work. I don't see outside like I don't I, I don't see any natural sunlight. I don't hear any music. I'm always too hot. 
it's really not nice. I don't work with people I particularly like that much other than a few guys that I do like. It's not gone well for me. And then the police have said I'm at fault. I call them up to say, are you sure? Have you read the report? Have you seen, have you got all the evidence? I think the guy was speeding and I mean, he was indicating and the police say, well, no, that was your fault. You put the van there. Your fault. Doesn't matter if he was indicating, which I honestly think is a really stupid thing to say. And I know that's the law. I already did know that, but it's ridiculous. It really is. And I've had to go on this driving course as an alternative to court and get all these fines and just get basically shafted by the law. And this driving course, which I haven't attended yet, it's it's quarter to nine to five all day, and it cost me a hundred and fifty five pounds. It it's they they say in the letter, oh, at a cost to you know cover police police costs whatever. I don't want to pay this. In fact, I don't even want to pay tax to you anymore. It's just involuntary. It's practically theft. I hate this. It's really shit. Excuse my language. Especially as I don't think it's my fault and neither do loads of other people. So, when I look back at what happened with this incident, I am really sure that this other car driven by the old man, he was speeding and he was really not paying much attention. This is because, I mean, it was really heavy rain. I don't think he had any lights on or anything. I mean, he when I first saw him, he was really far away. And in no time, he was right there and crashing into me. Another point. He had just come from that really long downhill straight. And it's very easy to overspeed there. I mean, you have to brake going down there, basically. And bear in mind, this is just on a nice, normal, dry day. This is heavy rain that we were in. And... Also, if he didn't notice a green flashing arrow on his dashboard and a tick noise, I don't think he would have been glancing down at his speedometer. Otherwise, he would have noticed, surely. So, God only knows what speed he was doing. Another point. My van is three and a half tons at maximum, okay? And it was really well loaded still. I think I'd only dropped off, like, two customers. I still had loads of work to do. And... Not only did he roll it over, he flipped it. It actually caught air, I think. And then onto its side. And then it actually went uphill on its side. And when I actually... Another point, when I actually turned my head and looked at him... I mean, you can kind of judge distance, you know... Plus, minus 5, 10 miles an hour from looking. And when I looked at him, he was coming so, so quick. It was like a quick blur and a flash of the orange on one side... I'm estimating at least 70 mile an hour, maybe more, and I'm talking in an extremely heavy rain environment. But here's the problem, there, there's no evidence of this. He, he didn't, there's no skid marks or anything because it was just all wet. I don't even know if he did hit the brakes. I mean, the guy looked really old, I don't know if his reactions are, are good enough, especially if he's not even paying attention to all this other stuff. He didn't horn, I mean, I had my window down, like I said, I would have heard that, he didn't flash. I don't know if he braked. I mean, surely he did. But even if he did brake, I, st I still saw him coming at some speed. So he must have been going even faster than that. But anyway, so there's no evidence of his speed, which is really annoying. Um, it always makes me want to calculate it through um, through uh, mass times velocity. You know, find the... Um, God, I can't think of the word while I'm, while I'm recording. Find the momentum. That was it. But anyway, what evidence we do have, kind of is that he was indicating, and obviously I'm not going to lie, I don't lie, okay? And why would I go out if he was if he was not indicating? All these witnesses came up to me and said, oh yeah, he was definitely indicating. I didn't even ask them. I didn't say, oh hey, was he indicating? No, 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 they they just came straight up to me, like, just as I'd gotten out of the van, and said, oh yeah, he's, he's, he was flashing his light. And they went up and looked in the car, and the indicator stalk was still pressed down after the accident. I don't think it was flashing, probably because the battery was disconnected in the in the deformation. But there was, there was all the evidence that he was indicating. It's silly, it really is. Um, anyway, despite all this, I'm still deemed to be at fault. So, I know my part of the blame, of course. Like I said, I'm, I'm saying 30-70 on this 
because I did move the van forwards. It is my responsibility, of course, driving out when giving way to make sure it's safe. Of course, I accept this. But, in my opinion, that other guy was a lot more at fault for falsely indicating, for possible speeding, and for not paying attention. And, yeah, he, despite all these people saying he indicated, including me, and, you know, some evidence at least, he actually um, responded to my solicitors, and he actually lied and said, nope, I was not indicating. Which, well, either one thing, it's a downright dirty lie, which is not good, or he just didn't know at all. And I, I find it amazing. I mean, once or twice I've left my indicator on, okay, in the car. Maybe, maybe done it on my bike as well, but I always make sure I double cancel and everything. Okay, and you know you'd must know it. It was so long ago that he would have had it on, and weirdly it was on a long, long straight road where it should have auto cancelled. So it's it's like he put it on. I'm actually starting to wonder if this is a flash for cash kind of thing. You know where people flash someone out and then they crash into them, and it's the guy who moved out's fault. It actually sounds a lot like that now that I think about it. It's really, really not a good thing. Um. But yeah, I'm actually really disappointed with the police right now. I mean, I had respect for the police before. You know, they do a dangerous job. They serve the community, etc., etc. But it, it, they just can't accept. I mean, I, I would accept it if they didn't have to blame anyone, if we just had to move on, okay? But the police can't accept that accidents happen, that we're human, and they need to point this finger of blame at somebody... And and that's why they call it the RTC instead of the RTA. That's the road traffic collision as opposed to accident. Because accident implies that maybe nobody was at fault. It's so that they can punish someone. It feels like that's their job now. You know, they're not doing their job if nobody gets in trouble. And when I was talking to the lady on the phone in the collisions department, you know, she sounded, you know, it was a normal phone call at the start. And then she looked through my, through my file, and then when she came back from there, she completely changed her tone of voice. And was talking to me like I was some kind of criminal scum, like I was, I was some kind of, you know, I shouldn't, I should be locked up or something. Like, you may as well have just spat at me or something over the phone somehow. It was, it was ridiculous. And the way she was talking to me, she was really nasty. Only after she read this and she realised, oh yeah, he's the guy to blame. He's the, he's the scumbag here. So anyway, I'm that that was quite a long video I know and I don't normally do videos like this. Um I just wanted to talk about it and maybe see what other people's opinions are and maybe just pass on some some knowledge to other people so that they know what it's like or at least slightly anyway. And just please guys, if you see someone indicating or flashing you out on a big road, just think twice. It really should be their fault if they do it, but it's not in real life, and it's wrong. I know it's stupid, but just you just need to bear that in mind. So anyway, that's my story. It's a long video. Thank you for sticking this far through, unless you skipped through, you little bastard. Um, yeah, that's it. Thank you so much. If you are interested in my other videos, then you may subscribe, but I'm not going to tell you to. I don't do that on my channel. You make your own decisions. If you liked it, like it. If not, then just leave it alone. Thank you so much, and I'll see you again in another video. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.